Alrighty guys, Tabletop Sports Delaware, and we are replaying the Battle of Gettysburg using the Avalon Hill 125th anniversary version of the game, <clears throat> which I have had since a year or two after it was put out. And we are on day three, July 3, 1863. Uh, thus far... <clears throat> Uh, the Confederates have Culp's Hill and Cemetery Hill. And the Union, there there are some units. There is a possibility to truly mount a counterattack and try to push Confederates back into town. Now we have AP Hill's 3rd Corps over here, uh, Longstreet's 1st Corps, and Ewell's 2nd Corps, Stewart's Cavalry, and Lee's headquarters back in McPherson's Woods. <coughs> We have uh, 3rd Cavalry Division um, on the Union left, 2nd Cavalry Division on the Union right. Um, what's left of 12th Corps Slocum's units are here. 6th <coughs> Corps, which uh, is Sedgwick's, but Sedgwick was taken down near by Longstreet near the end of Day 2. Um, we have Sykes' 5th Corps. Uh, we have cavalry, artillery in the middle, and we have Meade with uh, artillery reserve. Hancock's second corps is here, Sickles third, what remains of it. The Union have taken a lot of hits, but the Confederates are beginning to show signs of weakness. So we are going to do a day three. Lee wants a decisive victory. And the Union, really, they do not want to pull back as yet. It is a north-south battle. There is a definite demarcation. There is a line across here. And we're going to see what happens. Uh, there is a decided gap in the center of the Union line. <clears throat> uh, let's see what's going to happen. Turn 17, nobody is coming in at all on this turn, not until turn 19 for the Confederates, and then turn 20, uh, some cavalry leaking in for both sides, so it's pretty much what you see here is what we've got. So the Confederates will go first, the Confederate Army, <coughs> let us see how we want to do this today, Lee. wants to break the middle. With Longstreet, Pickett is coming up fresh. He wants to break the middle. <sighs> There's a lot of artillery on the Confederate right. <coughs> Union artillery on their left. Um, and the Union right, Confederate left, is clogged up. I think he wants to come down off Culp Hill and Cemetery Hill and drive the Union in two. <coughs> what the Union wants to do is, in these trees and roadways, they really want to form a defense and hopefully repel the Confederates, find an opportunity. So let's go. Uh, that in mind... We're going to shuffle pick it up with Hood. McClaws will fall back to reserve. Uh, Yule has half strength early in Rhodes. <coughs> There's a lot of artillery. I think they're going to pull Longstreet back. McClaws back even further. They're going to bring the Artillery up. <clears throat> and 
good. On this side over here, the Confederates, they want to bring their artillery back. They want to resituate <coughs> Hill. And now they want to leave Hill where he was. For now. Long Street, not there. Long Street over here. <coughs> right in the middle of Cemetery Hill. Okay. That is going to be the Confederates' first turn. Now, one more. They are going to bring their artillery up a little bit. McClaws is simply going to be there. So they are solidifying the line south of Gettysburg. Pretty much south of the Hagerstown Road. Okay. The Union. They need to do the same, if at all possible. Sykes. Is going to absorb how artillery is going to move back and how will come here uh, Muhlenberg will move back and Newton will come here cavalry will stay on the right Slocum will take Gary and move over to Newton. Williams will take his one, two, two and a half, three, three and a half towards the rear. Three and a half, four, four and a half, five, right there. <coughs> Huey's cavalry will be where he, they can go anywhere across the field, the battlefield. We have artillery, artillery, artillery. We have cavalry. Uh, they will move right there. And that'll be the Union's first turn. So we go to turn 18 on July 3rd from 8 to 10 o'clock in the morning. No units appear. Artillery shift for 2nd Corps. Newell has early in roads at 3 each. <coughs> come down off Culp's Hill and take on Slocum's 12th Corps, which consists of Newton's division of the 6th and his own uh, division led by General Geary. Uh, with Dance and Nelson in reserve. Dance, Nelson, and Eshelman in reserve. So that's going to be right down here. all we're going to do for this one. Okay, so we have Slocum 3, 5, in the woods 6, Yule is 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 5 Confederate. Oh, plus 7 on the roll, so that's a plus 2 for the Union. Yule will have to withdraw to Culp's Hill. Slocum is not going to take that zone. That is going to be it for the Confederates. Um, the Union Army on turn 19. Hmm. <sighs> 
going to position themselves. It's a game of chess at this point. Now Ransom's artillery is not coming up. It's going to be held in reserve by the Peach Orchard. Williams is coming up. <coughs> okay, turn 19. That was turn 19. Is it not? Nope, this is turn 19. And a uh, unit appearing for... The Confederates, uh, Cavalry Division under Imboden. He will find General Stewart. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He is able to make it to Stewart. So Stewart has a strong division, artillery in reserve, and Beckham. <coughs> Hill sees what's happening. Sees them moving around to the right. This is a tough thing to do. Solo. Really is. Lee wants the middle. Okay. Hill, Stewart, Hill, Longstreet, Yule. <coughs> Sorry, they're making their move. So Hill's third corps against Hancock's second. He has Hayes and Caldwell under him. Hill is running with Anderson and Heath. Then Longstreet's first corps, Pickett and Hood, taking on Williams' uh, division of the 12th corps. And Yule is going after Slocum again. And we are going to have... <laughs> Jenkins and Chambliss. Cavalry is going to work their way forward on the Confederate left. And we are going to have support by the uh, core artillery batteries. So let's do this. We've got three of them. Let's see if the Confederates can break. Break the Union lines. A.P. Hill taking on Hancock with McIntosh and Pegram in, uh, in support. Hancock has Hayes for three. Caldwell for six. A.P. Hill has Anderson for three. Heath for six. McIntosh, seven, eight. Pegram, nine, ten. <clears throat> Plus four Confederate. Plus two on the roll for Union. So Union... Uh, they do not lose a unit. It's three to five, but they must retreat. Hancock must retreat. Hancock will retreat to right there. <coughs> Longstreet taking on Williams with Alexander and Eshelman in, re in support. So Williams is two. Longstreet is four. Six is ten. And Pickett and Hood. 14, so that's a plus 10 for the Confederates. And a plus 9 on the roll. Williams is obliterated. <coughs> and Longstreet is going to hold. And we go down here to Culp's Hill in the east. Long Rock Creek. Yule taking on Slocum with Nelson and Dance in reserve. So Slocum has Newton for three and Geary for five. Yule has Early for three, Rhodes for six. Artillery makes it nine. It's a plus four Confederate. Plus one on the roll for Union, so plus three. They take a loss, and that'll be a hit to Newton, and they must withdraw. That 
they will withdraw to here and you will, will occupy the zone <coughs> Okay, the claws will come forward. Half strength, but they are still in the fight. Alrighty, that is Confederate, turn 19. So we go to Union, turn 19, and no units appearing. Um, they've got to get them out of there. Sykes comes around to Yule. Um, Muhlenberg is going to withdraw. Slocum is going to come back up and recharge. <coughs> Sickles and Hancock will take on 3rd Corps Hill. Lots of artillery support for both of these. Okay. So it's just those two main encounters here for turn 19. So we have a lot of artillery support to go against Yule. Uh, we have Sykes, 5th Corps. He's leading Howe of the 6th and Crawford of the 5th. Fifth for five. Slocum is another four. That's nine. Muhlenberg is ten. Tompkins, eleven, twelve. Martin, thirteen. Robertson, artillery, fourteen, fifteen. Tidball, sixteen. Against early three, Rhodes, three. Plus ten. And they roll plus nine. Second core is no more. Sykes takes the position. Sykes does not take the position. Slocum moves in. And it is now a brawl. Ah. Gibbon and Hancock. Sorry, Sickles and Hancock will be taking on Hill with Ransom, Hazard, Huntington, and Fitzhugh in support. That's four. Hayes makes seven, Caldwell ten, Rudolph, Randolph Artillery eleven, Humphreys thirteen. Hill has Anderson three, Heath six, plus seven Union, and the Union starting to roll, plus seven more. Um, third core is no more. <clears throat> Sickles is going to take that position. And there it just changed. Just like that. Longstreet is all there is. Gibbon is going to come up. We go to the 20th turn. Uh, cavalry divisions under Jones and Robinson are going to come in on the Chambersburg Pike. But at this point, it's all but over. Just like that. Just after noon on July the 3rd. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not much more to do at this point. Let's draw them back. Let's draw them back. Uh, Stewart to here, McClaws to here, Long Street to here. Bring these guys over. Uh, these guys can come up and jink around in the background, but there is no more strength on turn 20 for the Union. 
Uh, Merritt is going to come in on the Tanny Town Road. Uh, Slocum is going to move here. The cavalry will move there. Sykes. Uh, Hancock, a position in the center. Sickles. Cavalry. Artillery. Gibbon will come up. Artillery, artillery, artillery. Cavalry. And... Does Robert E. Lee continue? All he has is cavalry, artillery, and the first corps. That's all he has. Yule and Hill have been slain. And I really think that's it. The Confederate Army does not have a lot left at all, as you can see. <clears throat> On the right, McPherson's Woods is Robert E. Lee's... Uh, Headquarters, uh, Jeb Stewart has a couple of cavalry divisions. A row of artillery along the Hagerstown Road and the Hanover Road. Um, McClaws and Long, uh, the First Corps is in the center, but that is the only infantry that remains on the field. Everyone else has been captured or killed or has dispersed to the rear. Um, cavalry intersperses, but that's not going to do a whole awful lot. And you can see, if you want to call it strength, what the Union has remaining. Infantry in Slocum and Sykes. And Hancock, Gibbon is still there. Sickles with infantry. Lots of artillery. Cavalry. Fitzhugh. I do believe that is going to be game. Short third video. But, uh, yeah. No need to continue it. Lee would withdraw. And I believe Meade would let him. Just as he did in real life. No need. They're hurt. They're dwindled. Um, a lot of loss of life in this battle. Uh, combat value of 7, 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... 17, 18, 19, 21, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31 combat points for the Union. And 5, 10, 15, 21, uh, 29 combat points for the Confederates. <clears throat> so a lot of people lost their lives, not to mention the half-strength units that are in the field right now. So it was a huge battle. Uh, I would say a decisive battle. And here I am just waxing and talking crap and everything and whatever. It is it is what it is. It's a game. It's awesome. Um, it is one of the greatest battles fought on American soil. Um, and it's a great game. It's a great introductory game. It is touted as an introductory game. Um and it's a fun game to play. There are optional rules, which I've never gotten around to using. There are also more rules that are out there. And Avalon Hill, um, General Magazine, there are so many things on this game, both the original and also the anniversary version, which this is. A fantastic game. Guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a happy 4th. This is Tabletop Sports Delaware saying keep on rolling, guys. Happy Independence Day. Dun, 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 dun,